I'm a search and rescue officer for the U.S. Forest Service. I have some stories to tell. Credited to Search and Rescue Woods. Part 6 It's been way too long since I posted an update, and I'm sorry about that. There's also been some confusion about the new formatting requirements on the board, which I've cleared up. So these next few stories are going to be posted a little differently. They'll be in chronological order, and I'll do my best to tie them into each other as much as I can so it doesn't skip around too much. When I started out as a rookie, no one had told me a lot about the job in terms of weird things that could happen. I'm assuming this was largely to prevent me from freaking out and abandoning the park. But a few months into my service, when I was still a rookie, a friend and I were drunk at a party, and he opened up a bit. Yeah, it can get a little crazy out there, I guess. I think the worst ones are when people die when they just shouldn't, you know? Or when we find them dead like 10 minutes after someone says they saw them last. They were fine when I passed them on the switchback, I swear. That sort of shit. Like, take this guy who I found one spring out on a really popular trail. Someone comes into the VC freaking out about some guy who's lying in the middle of the path in this giant pool of blood. So we run out there and we find this guy dead as a doornail, which he absolutely should be, because the back of his head is like mashed potatoes. The skull is decimated. Brains are leaking out like custard filling. And the guy's old, so you figure, yeah, he probably fell and hit his head. Old people fall all the time. It's no big deal. Except that this area where he fell doesn't have any big rocks. There's not even any stumps or big branches. And on top of that, there's no blood trail. So he clearly died where he dropped. Now that's when you turn to murder. But there were people just out of line of sight with the guy. If someone came up behind him and murdered him, there's no way someone wouldn't have heard. And again, even if someone had, there'd be a blood trail and spatter all over the place. But everyone on the scene said it looked exactly like he'd fallen and smashed his head on a rock. So what the fuck did he hit his head on? And then there was this lady I found in a different park about five years ago, back when I was upstate. We found her in the middle of a stand of big junipers, curled around the trunk like she was hugging it. We pick her up to move her, and a fucking waterfall comes out of her mouth, splashes all over my shoes. Her clothes are dry, and her hair is dry. But the amount of water in her lungs and stomach was phenomenal. Unreal, man. Coroner's report says the cause of death was drowning. Her lungs were completely full of water. This, even though we're in the middle of the high desert, and there isn't a body of water for miles. No puddles, no nothing. No signs of anyone else being out there. I mean, yeah, it's possible they were murdered, but why go out of your way to do it like that? Why not just stab them and be done with it? I don't know. It just sits weird with me. Now, of course, that freaked me out a little. But we were wasted, and I guess I sort of wrote it off as a fluke. I assume there was exaggeration there since, you know, we were wasted. Now, I don't like talking about this next case very much. It was an awful one that I've done my best to forget about. But of course, that's easier said than done. This happened about six months after the conversation with my friend at the bar. And up until that point, I hadn't had a lot of really weird shit go down. A few things here and there, and of course, the stairs. But it's amazingly easy to get used to stuff like that when it's treated as if it's normal. This case was a little different. A guy with Down syndrome in his 20s went missing after his family lost sight of him on a major path. That was odd in and of itself because this guy never left his mom's side. She was absolutely convinced he'd been kidnapped. And unfortunately, a ranger who isn't with the park anymore insinuated that no one was going to kidnap someone, well, with that kind of disability. Not very tactful, to say the least. We wasted a lot of time trying to calm her down enough to get information about him. And then we put out an official missing persons call. Because of the urgency of the situation, him being mostly unable to function alone, we had local police come in and help us. We didn't find him the first night, which was heartbreaking. None of us wanted to think of him being alone out there. We assumed he'd just kept wandering and was staying ahead of us. We brought out helis the next day, and they spotted him in a little canyon. I helped bring him back up, but he was in bad shape. 
and I think we all knew he wasn't going to make it. He'd fallen and broken his spine, and couldn't feel his lower half. He'd also broken both of his legs, one at the femur, and he'd lost a lot of blood. He was confused and scared while he was alone, so he'd probably exacerbated the injuries by dragging himself a little ways. I know it sounds awful, but while I was riding in the copter with him, I asked him why he'd wandered off. I just wanted something to tell his mother, to let her know it wasn't her fault, because he was fading fast and I didn't think she'd get to ask him herself. He was crying, and he said something about how the little sad boy had wanted to come play. He said the little boy wanted to trade so he could go home. Then he closed his eyes, and when he woke up again, he was in the canyon. I'm not sure that's exactly what he said, but it was what I thought the gist of it was. He kept crying, asking where his mommy was, and I held his hand and tried my best to keep him calm. It was cold out there. He kept saying that. It was cold out there. My legs were frozen. It was cold out there. It's cold in me. He was getting even weaker, so he eventually stopped talking and he closed his eyes for a while. Then, when we were about five minutes from the hospital, he looked right at me, with these big tears running down his face, and he said, Mama won't see me no more. Love, Mama. Wish she was here. And he closed his eyes, and he just never woke up. It was horrible, and I don't like talking about it. That case was one of the first ones that really rattled me badly. Because of how badly it affected me, I reached out to a senior ranger, who ended up helping me through it. As time went on, and we got to know each other better, he ended up sharing one of his own stories with me. It was disturbing, but it helped to know that I wasn't the only one affected by the things going on out here. I think this must have happened before you got here, because I think if it had happened while you were here, you'd remember it. I know it didn't end up in the news, for some reason, but I think most people who've been here long enough know about it. The park sold off a portion of land to a logging company, and it was a really controversial thing. But it wasn't that large or old of a plot, and it was right after the recession, so we needed cash bad. Anyway, they were felling this plot of land, and we get a call that we need to get our supervisors out right away. I don't know why, but they end up sending me and a few other guys along with the heads. I guess for power and numbers to see what was up. We got there, and all these guys are crowded around a tree that they just cut down. They're all pissed off and freaking out, and the foreman comes over and says he wants to know what we think we're up to. What the hell y'all think this is, some kind of sick joke? You got a lot of fucking nerve pulling this shit. We bought this land fair and square. Well, we don't know what the hell he's talking about, so he brings us over to this felled tree and points at it, and tells us that when they cut it down, it was just like this, and they'll be damned if they put it there. The inside of the tree was all rotted out and hollow in one spot, and when they'd cut it down, it had exposed that chamber, and inside was a hand, like a perfectly severed hand, and looks like it actually fused with the inside of the tree. Well, now we think they're pulling a joke. So we tell them that we don't like being fucked with and we start to leave. But they tell us they've already called the cops and then they'll go right to the media if we don't stick around. Well, that gets the head's attention. So they stick around and talk to the police about it. Everyone is denying that they put the hand in there. And besides, how would anyone have even done it? It's clearly a real hand, but it's not mummified or skeletal. It's brand new probably not even a day old, and it definitely fused with the wood. You can see that it's coming right out of it. The loggers, they insist that they didn't put it there. Somehow this fresh human hand ended up fused to the inside of this living tree. The cops have them cut up the section of the tree into a movable chunk. Then they take the hand away, and the area is closed off. There was a pretty big investigation, but I know they didn't find any answers. Now it's become this legend. And as far as I know, we haven't sold any more property for logging. As you all know, I went to a training seminar recently and heard some amazing and horrible things there. One of the guys I talked to while I was there told me a story when we were all around the campfire one night. We were both pretty drunk. You'll see a pattern here. And we were swapping stories. He told me this one. 
Me and another guy were out on a field search because some campers reported screaming noises at night. So we head out there to look for whatever fucking mountain lion has wandered into the area, and I'm pissed. We've had three of them show up in the camping areas that year alone, and I'm getting tired as hell of constantly having to deal with them. Plus, I just don't like them anyway. They're a pain in the ass, and they're loud, and they scare the shit out of me. Fucking cats, pieces of shit. I'm groaning about it to the guy I'm with, and he thinks it's a real fucking riot. So we're seeing all these broken branches and what look like dens, and we're pretty sure we know where this thing is. I call in, and they tell me to confirm if possible, which you know just means they want you to step in a big pile of shit and use that as proof. I'm not seeing any, though, so I basically just tell them to shove it. I'm done. We know that damn thing's out here somewhere, even if I'm not stepping in its shit or inside its mouth or whatever. Guy I'm with wanders off to take a piss or whatever, and I stay behind watching this little burrow under a tree to see if maybe a fox or something is living under it. Because I love foxes, man. They're cute as hell. But anyway, I'm watching this tree and I start hearing branches crackling. And it's coming from the direction my partner went opposite of. Now, I've got my pistol. But you and I both know that's not going to do shit against a cat. I cock it and holler for my partner to get his dumb ass back. But he's too far and he can't hear me. I stand up and get my sights on where the thing is approaching. And I shit you not, man. I just about peed myself. This guy is coming toward me, and he's backflipping through the fucking woods. Like, instead of walking, he's doing these crazy fucking backflips. And I swear to God, he cleared every fucking log and bush in his path. It was like he knew right where he was going. I yell at the guy to stop right where he is, and then I'm pointing a gun right at him. But he keeps coming, and I just kind of lost it. I shot at the ground in front of him, And it was a dumb fucking thing to do, but man, I didn't want this guy anywhere near me. When I fired, he was about 50 yards from me. And as soon as the gun goes off, he whirls around and goes off, backflipping back into the woods. The partner hears my gun go off and runs back and asks what's up. And I tell him there's some fucking weirdo out here, hopped up on God knows what, and we need to get the hell out of Dodge. I let the cops know what happened, and I didn't get in any trouble for firing, but man... I don't know what that motherfucker was on. I've never seen anything like that before. Shit was absolutely butt-fuck crazy. I think we can agree that there's stuff going on out here in the woods. And while I'm not going to spout off about what it could be or offer any theories, what I want people to take away from all of this is that it is so damn important to be safe when you're out there. I know a lot of you think you're invincible, but the fact is that you can die out here or be hurt or go missing. It's easier than you'd ever imagine. I apologize for this relatively short update, guys. I will do my absolute best to continue this series as soon as possible. Thanks for all your continuing support. It means the world to me. Hey, everybody. This is Winter Freshest. I just wanted to say thank you for taking time out of your day to watch one of my videos. If you enjoy my videos, feel free to like and subscribe. Also, If you have any requests for other narrations, please comment down below. Thanks again, everyone.